it, it seems that human beings have a lot of strange characteristic. If we get an idea that somebody tells us something, we create a concept. And then, this is the strangest part, and then you look for what, where that concept is in reality. I think that it's quite strange, really. It's especially noticeable in Buddhism. Somebody says, um, emptiness. And then we make a picture in our mind of emptiness. And then we search around for it. In books, videos, meditation, uh, groups, you know, wherever. So we're always, we always seem to do things that way, that way around. First we get an idea, and then we look for where the idea is. But um, the most the unique thing about Dogen's uh, teachings, writings, uh, are that he tells us what to do that. He gives us a, a concept. He says, you know, don't, don't look for it. See what that concept means to you. And he uses phrases like turning the light you know, inwards. Or studying experience. Now, but in the modern, modern society, um, you don't like to study the experience, you like to study on YouTube or study with the latest book. Oh, there's a new book about Sansa, Kota Soraki. You read it, you know, and then you read what he says, and then you think, what does he mean? What does that make me mean? But Dogen says repeatedly through all his writings in the 13th century, he says, look, look at yourself for a moment. So um, I'll tell you something and look and see if you can find it in your own experience. Which is quite strange, but really, really useful. He also says, um, Zaza is the whole of desert of Buddhism. Actually, I don't like the word Buddhism. I don't like ism on the end. I don't know whether we check it's not like Polish, whatever it's the same, but it makes it into an abs abstract noun, mm -hmm. Buddhism. Mm -hmm. And Dogen doesn't talk about Buddhism. He writes the Butsu Dog. The Butsu is Buddha. Do is way, path, or truth, or teaching. So he never says Buddhism, he says the Buddha's teaching, or the Buddha's way. Not the Buddhist. That's another one. The Buddhist. If you're, if you're a Buddhist, you're immediately in the category. Um, um, Buddhism has, in my opinion, in modern times, put itself into a big box. And uh, then the people who like to study what's inside this box, the Buddhism, call themselves Buddhists. But uh, even as early as the Lotus Sutra is written, the truth is everywhere. Well, though the truth is everywhere, is written in the Lotus Sutra. The um, American Association of Soto Zen teachers call themselves custodians of the Dharma. Well, custodian means somebody who looks after something. Custodian. Custodian. Guardian. Mm -hmm. 
the, the Castellan army, which you can't help suggesting that they have it. <laughs> and um, yeah. you can maybe come and find out. <laughs> so um, there's, there's lots of things in um, the way that the Buddha's teachings are propagated in modern society, which to me are, are somehow That's too difficult a word. Um, they make they make the teachings rigid. There's many different things. Yeah. 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 Feel it's time to take it out the box. Um, you know so much more than, for instance, though, in the 13th century, you know about bodies, and medicine, and you know about the universe, and so on. So, um, if the truth is everywhere, then it must be all in those places. It must be in medicine, it must be in physics, it must be in astronomy, it must be in whatever. <coughs> so anyway, that's my take. Um, what I really wanted to talk about today was Zazen. Um, because I've realised that Zazen has become very popular in Europe and in the States, maybe especially. And um, people assume that as long as you sit with your legs crossed, or wherever you want to sit, and especially if it's in a kind of Japanese looking setting, and um, with incense, and you sit in a special way, that's Zazen. But I wonder if that's true. It seems to me that um, even if you sit in the posture which we call Zazen, it's possible to be doing something else. Dogen wrote in the 13th century, Zazen is not Shuzen. And Shuzen was a very popular term in Dover's time. It meant um, med meditating to educate yourself, right? meditating to cultivate your inner self. And um, Tobin wrote, 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 wrote in the first chapter that Tazim is not meditating to cultivate. And then, a couple of times over the last year, I visited a, a very nice, um, it's becoming a Buddhist center in Malaskala, which is just north of uh, the, the Kukunashi mountains. Very beautiful place, and, and there's a very clever teacher there. Um, very, um, <coughs> he has lots of students, and um, he's a nice guy. Um, he's about my age. His name is Amadipa. That's his name. He, he, te he teaches in Buddhism as deep samadhi. So when he meditates, he does deep samadhi. And according to what I understand, if you do deep samadhi, you go deep into yourself <coughs> and you realize the nature of openness and the nature of impermanence and these kind of things. But I don't think Tazan is anything like that. So, although this is a very nice man, he's very friendly and he's very, very bright, he knows 
We're doing something completely different. I find it impossible to go deep into myself. I don't think I have a deep self. There's no deep inside me. And I was reminded of this when recently I started a workshop with uh, one of the Dogen Sangha groups in London to study the one of Jeff Dogen's writings called Zazen Shin. It's one of the chapters in the Shoko Genzi. Shin. Zazen is, as with Zazen, Shin actually means a thin bamboo needle. Shin? Shin. It's a different Shin. Same, same pronunciation, different kanji. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There's there, there at least 20 different shin. <laughs> <laughs> shin means you, shin means body, shin means mind. This shin means yeah, about heart. Yeah, heart, mind. It's a thin bamboo needle which they used in, in China for agriculture. You know, steel needles. Very, you can split off a very thin sliver of bamboo and use it. And that's what they did. So zazen shin means a stim. I can stimulating in with certain energy signals in the body. So what knowing by the zazen shin? It's the title of the chapter is to stimulate your zazen. And um, in it, he starts the chapter with the story one of the Chinese masters from the ninth century, master in the Japanese pronunciation, Yakusen Higen. Yakusan. The Yakusan even that appears in quite a few of the Khan stories. So the Bodhi must have done and quotes some of these Khan stories. Where Master Yakusan even is sitting in his <coughs> dojo and the teacher in medieval China would sit on a on a chair, but a very big chair. It was like a raised platform with arms and the tatami with it. So the master was sitting up on his chair, his zazen seat, practicing zazen. And uh, one of the students comes past and stops and says, What are you doing? Sitting up there in a uh, high position in the still state. And Yakuzan says, I'm thinking, but I'm not thinking. It's a paradox. So the monk says to him, Oh, yeah. How can you think about not thinking? And Yakuzan says, It's different from thinking. Um, the actual phrase in Chinese or Japanese is he shiryu. Shiryu is thinking. He means different from outside of. So this monk asks his teacher about what Zazen is. The first the teacher says, he's thinking about what I'm thinking. Doesn't really make sense. And then on further investigation, <coughs> he says, um, it's, it's different from thinking, it's outside of thinking. And Dogen liked that story because it describes the essence of Zazen. So the question is, so, the rest of the chapter Bergen discusses what 
is, is the thing you think he needs. And he also discusses thinking and not thinking. So there are three things thinking, not thinking, difficult thinking. And he discusses these all appear in Zazen. So when, when we're practicing Zazen, sometimes we're thinking. Everybody knows it. Often, most of the time, we're thinking. Sometimes we're not thinking. But what times are we thinking? Yeah. For instance, at the instant you adjust your posture because you feel your head's drop forward and your back is slumped. So. At the instant you do that, you stop thinking. So we all know about thinking. We all can see that there are times when our thoughts just stop for an instant. Well, after sitting for 40 or so years, the way I would describe the meaning of different thinking is that it's just sitting there. You're not deep inside yourself anymore. You're not staring at the wall and looking at the patterns. You're not listening to the bird song. You're not thinking about how you should be practicing. You're just sitting there. Like a baby. Or like a cat sits in the sun. And that's a very simple story. It's nothing to do with understanding. It's nothing to do with reading books on Buddhism. It's nothing to do with Bowman's writing. Except that in his writings, he points to this very simple state. So it seems to me a lot of people seem to be practicing Zazen but the, the amount of their zazen when they're simply sitting might be very, very small. Why is that? Well, I mean, it's happened to me through the years. I've always sat every day. But if I, in the past, when I had a busy job, if I spend a week very busily working, trapped in the pressures of society, when I sit, my mind is going around like a little water wheel. And for that wheel to stop spinning often takes a long time. So I realised after some years that our zazen is just how we make it. And I think in the modern world it's very difficult to make zazen into, into zazen because it takes such a long time for us to slow down to the state where we are just simply sitting. We're not lost inside ourselves. We're not thinking about what we should be doing. We're not um, wrapped up in the pain in our body. We're just, just sitting there. But we can only learn what that state of different from thinking is. The state, the simple state, which Dogen described as, as dropping off our physical body, or dropping off our mental thoughts. 
we can only notice that state if, if we practice a lot or if our lives are fairly balanced. Now, many people come to retreats, not the devil, but only this one, as a kind of uh, health spell. Oh, I'm so tense, I'm so worried, I'm so upset, I've got to do a weekend or a week, you know, does anything. And, and yeah, the wheel slows down and settle down, and then after it's finished, they go and you're off again. <laughs> this may make sense to you, people in this room. But we cannot find the simple state of sin if the rest of our lives are furiously cycling along the road of our life. We won't do it. For this reason, over the years, we should be a family life. We should leave society in order to study the Buddhist mm -hmm. truth. It sounds, oh, oh what are you telling me that I've got to leave my family? Or this, this, this ancient uh, story about the Buddha leaving his wife and son. Is that what you have to do? No. Um, in the modern world, we can practice as a living woman and still live with our partner's children. We can practice as a living woman and still go to our job and take our place in society. But if we become trapped in the pressures of family life, because there are, aren't there? or the pressures in society, business, we want to get a better job, we want to promote ourselves, we want to be responsible for what we're doing. All these things will make it almost inevitable that when we sit in Zazen, it takes a long time before we settle down. So is that don't know rights because in the thirteenth century, if you didn't leave leave your family and leave society and go and live in the forest in the temple, you couldn't find any time to do anything. But even in this modern world The people who want to make the Buddha's <laughs> truth or the Buddha's way in part of their life, it's impossible to do it unless you start to learn how to free yourself from family and society pressure, which are enormous. <laughs> Oh, that's what it's about. I'm not sure I want to do that. Okay, fine. You can come to a retreat every few months and detox. And you can go back. Um, I even feel this is true of um, some um, Zen groups who, who um, they have um, fixed. <coughs> place and so on, we will come and we practice together and they do all the, all the um, rituals, everybody knows that rituals are helpful, they make you feel calm and stable. So they come into the dojo and do all the rituals and then they go back to their normal life. 
which, which may be chaotic and very stressful. So I, I'm not criticizing anybody. Um, it's very nice to go to a health spa for a week to get rid of your stress. All I'm saying is the good way that nobody to what is um, covers more than that. It, it actually requires you to modify the amount of disturbance you are getting in your daily life. Not when you come to a retreat or when you go and sit in a dojo somewhere and light the incense or peacefully. Of course that's healthy. But the Buddha way that Dogen teaches and the Buddha way that I know from my teacher is a, a bigger deal than that. You may not want it. I know mean, lots of people who do things for a hobby. Um, or they, um, as I say, they go to a health spa for a week to help them relax. Or what we do in modern society, we take a holiday and go and lie on the beach. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because we lie on the beach and all our stress goes, and then we have to go home again. So that's what's been on my mind recently. <laughs> it's, it's not um, particularly encouraging to hear. <laughs> if you want to follow what you think you're following, it's a bigger deal than you think it is. It's going to take more of you than you will probably want to do. Uh, of course, it's up to you. But the, the other thing is, it works both ways. If, if you manage to sit every day in Vazna, then because of the physical posture, sitting in balance, with your head balanced over your shoulders, and so on, that has an effect on how <coughs> settled and stable you feel physically. And if we do that every day, every day, every day, then it changes us. We may find, I, know, I, I like to feel stable. It's much better than rushing off to work. So then over maybe Ten years later, we find a way to oh, a few days, or whatever. So zazen changes us, but at the same time, for that to happen, we we have to realise that it's quite a big thing. Actually, it's not a, it's not a weekend activity to de stress. It's it's much bigger. Than that. It's easy for me to say because I've reached the age where I don't have to work here somehow. But as long as I don't mind having my money, I can have free time. But I have to pay you the price for it. I don't have a bank or house, I don't have much. For example, it's a good um, exchange for me. So what I'm trying to do is put into a modern context, in my experience, what people who are following the Buddha have done through the centuries. They've disconnected a little bit. Has anybody read the book, a um, popular book at the moment, written by an Israeli professor called Yuval Paradi? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's called Satyavis. Yeah. It's a story of the human race. 
Um, I'm sure it's translated into Czech. Mm -hmm. it, it's really good uh, because he slowly, through its perfect work, makes us realize how society, as a shared mental belief, right, traps us, changes us, imprisons us. And how most of that prison we create ourselves. We believe in things that other human beings believe in. And so that becomes something good. Money's very good. Which I believe. Well, read the book. It's very good. So in, in today's frenetic, chaotic, crazy society that we live in, we don't realize, many, many people don't realize that it's, they're trapping themselves in that. They're causing their own suffering, their own unha unhappiness, because they can't let go. And we can see it in small ways. Just the phone. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Josh, who's in artificial intelligence, will explain to me how the algorithms that all these social networks are making to encourage you to pick the phone <laughs> are out of control now. So, you know. Trapping yourself in your phone, walking through the countryside with a beautiful sun, walking down the street. <laughs> so we're creating our own hell. I think they, they call it uh, fear of missing out. There is something, something happened that is this fear. Yeah, we set up. Yeah, we want to be in the, in, in the group. In the, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's nice to be part of the group. I mean, you know, the Sangha is part of the group. And um, in, in the group, you share something. But it's important, what are you sharing? I lived in Japan for nearly 30 years, and Japan is a group society. The most important thing in Japan is to fit in to your group. The group may be family or your work colleagues or your country. So now the group the group is useful, it's benefits. But if it um, if you're trusted um might be nice to look for what you Yes. So, I mean, I have been out in my life when I practice a little more. Yeah. Uh, access and benefits, from style to discipline. And what happened periodically in history, I said, okay, I want to make it more in my life. And I push it a little bit in a perspective of my ego. I push it a little bit, you know, in my family, okay, I want this time, and, you know. It was ego trip, and of course, it went badly. I, and uh, it's hard to find a way with the family because you know, my children they, they get so vicious and they want to share my time yeah. and my life has yeah. uh, part of being family is uh, yeah. you know engaged with other ones not just I mean yeah. so I only I, I think we should help a bit. Yeah. You know, we start when I cut off one day of walking and I have like three Fridays. <coughs> Otherwise it's still struggling, and every time I try to push by my, you know, by my mark, you know, by, by deciding how to do it, it's, it's kind of ego trip, and it's a lot better. Well, everything's an ego trip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, the egotistic people, extrovert people, just show their ego outside. Mm -hmm. Shy people, introvert people, have the same ego, and yeah, they yeah. push it inside. 
Everybody has a movie. It's impossible to get rid yeah. of it. Yeah, everyone's afraid to not to get rid of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, you're here. And you come to the that end of it. So, you, you have a big, you have a very big, very close family. No, not, I don't have. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have any family here in Europe. You have a huge family and sisters and yeah, get family. together. So it's really difficult for you. My difficulty, I have a difficulty too, I'm, I'm alone. So we both have difficulties. You're solving yours a little bit. So a little bit right. Not one step is one step, isn't it? It seems there's no other way, there's no natural shortcut. There's no shortcuts, no. <laughs> if I don't give you a label, you want to know. But it's here, it's evident, it's everywhere, it's here now. Because the people use these 10 years love. Everybody is speaking about love. I know it's love, love is this, this is love, this is love. It's a label. How to, because you have thousands of people in the love, it's the same about you. Nobody will fight also. Yeah, so do you want me to tell you or do you want me to tell me more? No, no, no. no it's, it's sometimes it's very difficult to be... Are you asking me or are you explaining something? It's maybe how you manage it. Yeah. You are feeling that you are not able to. Did you hear what I said to you? It's, it's evident, it's here. This is, this is all there is. This is what, what the label truth means. It means this life, here and now, your life, my life, with all our problems and our worries and bits of peace, this is it. That's it's the whole it's deal. It's the problem with family, but the problem with work. The problem with family and the problem with work is not here in this room now. It's here. Right? So leave what is here and just be here. And that's called realizing the truth. So to be where you are now, here, leaving your family Leaving society is to realize the truth. It's something stupid and simple, which any dog or cat does, <laughs> or squirrel. But we can't do it. We I can't don't. leave it. Or spider. Or spider. Or spider, yes. You can't do it. It's so difficult for us. It's almost impossible for us. <laughs> because we're so cerebral. Cerebral? Yeah. Because we're so cerebral, we have phones and computers and, mm -hmm. and algorithms. Mm -hmm. and cerebral. Cerebral. Mm -hmm. Mental. 
So that excellence has created everything. Tables, chairs, coffee. <laughs> watches everything we created everything because we're so clever so that's our unbalanced so we, we're using our power here to create something which is huge but there's something else we can't be where we are we increasingly we want to be somewhere where we're not or we don't want to be where we are this is not possible this type of direction go the opposite direction and this time out yeah. <laughs> uh, everybody is going to Yeah, everybody, yeah, me too, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no, no, it's not, it's just like this. I give up. Mm -hmm. I give up being somewhere else, so I end up being here. I would like to ask, because uh, if you uh, describe this, uh, like that, yeah, there are uh, Uh, these problems which we usually create, uh, create in the mind, so yeah. then it's best just to realize that it's in the mind and to be in here. here. It's yeah. uh, much more understandable here when we uh, are in, in session and so on, but can I... Uh, it's very difficult <laughs> yes. for me to do in real situation yes. when I am in the middle of some big stress when I do yes. thousands of things. Yes. Do, do you have any uh, way how uh, you, what helps you to, to do this if you have a lot of <laughs> feelings? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> slowly, through my, 50, I've been practicing nearly 50 years now, slowly something changed. I don't know. <laughs> only thing I can say is, what did I do consistently for 15 years? I sat and does it every day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you know, maybe in 10 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes. Now I have time, maybe a couple of hours a day. That's the one thing I did every day. So maybe, it's a hypothesis, <laughs> which I can't prove, maybe Zazen slowly, almost unconsciously, changed me. Mm -hmm. Maybe the reason that I don't have a, a wife, I don't have a daughter here, um, I had two sisters, I don't have any sisters, I don't have any parents, maybe that was all slowly something moving me into a, a, a peaceful area in my life. Mm -hmm. Hypothesis. I can't, I can't prove it. Mm -hmm. But I believe it. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you do it? Um, well, if you practice as an um there will be a result. Everything has a result. Because of the So, the result of sitting in physical balance every day, you change your physiology. So, it will change s small, subtle things which you will never know. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of hope, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a belief. But whether you continue or not, nobody knows. I, I didn't know whether I would practice as a 45 years. 
all I knew was, oh, I like this. I'm going to do it again. And the next day I do it. I don't know whether the <coughs> following day I'm going to do it or not. Mm -hmm. now, now it's become a habit, so I can say, yeah, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure, certainly I'm going to practice as an every day until I die. More probably, unless I become a very But when I started, there was no, no guarantee that I was, to myself, that I was going to continue. <coughs> So that's the way it starts. And then as you do it for longer, you start to have confidence. I seem to love this, I seem to be doing this. Is there a big kind of this people from the years which passed and which I done it's still noise and you speak about what you can do in years and years of practice but it's not this mode like yeah I will you know this panic mode I will you know uh, uh, with healthy or exercise more you know whatever yeah. that thing. it's I just realized my mind shifted to this panic mode you know I, I want to achieve something that is this Mike speak about this too, doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't... Yeah, so this is, this is why teachings are important. Because the teachings say, no, you don't need to achieve anything. You need to stop trying to achieve things. If you want. So for some people, that's too much. <coughs> no, I, I, you know, my whole life I want to achieve something. So fine. But the Buddha... <coughs> is to give up wanting to achieve something in that sense. Intentionally, you know, I want to become better, bigger, richer, more famous. Those kind of achievements give them up. That you can achieve. Today, I was happy. Today, now, I'm here. I'm not anywhere else. And uh, it's okay. That's an achievement. But it's not a, something that you want to get to that you don't have. Even better that it's like, I'm unhappy just now, but it's okay. Yeah. Whether, whether the Buddha way, the Buddha's truth, will be popular or not, I don't know. That doesn't, doesn't look very hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dogen, Dogen, you know, is so famous now, but when he lived, he was in a little temple up in the, away, away from the city and uh, just a few students living with him. And then, he wrote all this stuff and then they put it in a big box and nobody looked at it for <laughs> 400 years. They said that was important to bow to it. That wouldn't be. So, you know, um, but the truth is the truth. I mean, the truth that, that um, the Buddha talked about is something so simple uh, the word truth is, is uh, useless to describe it. Because truth is abstract. Um, so, directly we give a label, as Boris said, we create the label in here, then we look for it. So, we're looking for the truth. But it's not something you look for, it's something you stop looking for. <laughs> so, the uh, Gohan story is always amusing. 
the student says to his master, please tell me what's the essence of the Buddha's truth? And the master says, I do that cup of tea. <laughs> and that's not a joke. <laughs> but it's so difficult for us, for me too, for everybody. And in modern society where all our life is moving into here, mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're living in here. So it's very unbalanced. So we work something like sport, opposite, you know, physical activity, go to the gym, do yoga, anything to take us out of here. Mm -hmm. I can't bear it in here. So, you know, I do some stretches. <laughs> <laughs> or go for a walk, which mm -hmm. is important. So sport is becoming, physical activity is becoming very, very important. To take us out of our virtual world. It's time to stop you. Mm. Not yet, five minutes. Five minutes, okay. Can I ask if is my understanding correct that if we sit as an every day? Yeah. Uh, well, so, um, that we create less anger and pride in conflict to that extent that we don't have to revisit that conflict in our head afterwards? Well, I, I say yes, <laughs> but I can't <laughs> prove anything. <laughs> in, that, in, the, in that sense, I can only tell you my experience, yes. In my experience, yes, for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I don't like that part, that revisiting part in my mind. Yeah. That revisiting part in my mind. Like I am looking back at some conflict, going over it. Oh, it's gone. You know? it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't let go. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But if, if there's some problem, we still need to move our ass and solve it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't tell you. him a few times and I, I was I was quite interested. I thought we could discuss things but he, he's a teacher so he can only teach me, he can only talk to me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm. So yes. how, how do you explain? So I listened to his some of his teachings and I understand that the most the meditation he does is deep samadhi where you go into your Self, which I don't understand because I can't go into myself. And then in there, he says, you see the real nature of impermanence. Well, to me, that I can't understand that. Remember me, uh, some starting uh, talks about the uh, Buddha who went to his uh, baskets. Yes. Went to, to ask it. You, you have a talk about the Buddha uh, life, and he is going to ask it. They ser are searching some very subtle something. Uh, the yogins. 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 Yeah. 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 
Aesthetics. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he was searching. Sounds like something like this. This fuck going into himself and then. Yes, yes, maybe, maybe. I, I can only tell you what I learned, and I was quite surprised to realize that we seem to be doing something completely different. And he, he's. he's He's a really nice man, and he has many, many students across the world. He, he knows lots and lots of Buddhist theory, and he read all the sutras. He, he, he speaks Chinese, Japanese, Hindi, Sanskrit, Czech, German, English, Spanish. Mm. He's a very, very bright guy. I was surprised to realize that what he's doing, what I'm doing, he's, he, he has a big notice on his Buddha, Buddhism is only one. And then I think we'll do, we'll do something different. Um, completely different. Thank <laughs> you. Okay.